Welcome to The Healthier Home. Today, I'm going to give you some more details about what building biology is and explain what this beautiful science is all about. So building biology is all about the study of how buildings impact the health of the people inside them. It got its start in post-World War II Germany and was brought over to the English-speaking world by an architect by the name of Helmut Ziha. He got his big realization on how buildings can impact health when he was working in North Africa in 1980. And he was in charge of the building structures for 90,000 people in this area. And he realized that the majority of people had left their government-provided concrete houses and gone back to live in tents. And he wondered why. So it turned out that the structures that they had built for everyone were heating the rooms up inside to such a degree that even the air conditioning couldn't provide relief. And so he looked at the traditional building methods and realized that they incorporated a whole much more ventilation, covered walkways, um, overhangs which provided more ventilation and, and also um, shade, and they were built out of clay. So generally just very different than the structures that they had built. And this really kind of triggered this idea in him uh, and this what would become a lifelong passion of his on how buildings can impact the health of the people inside them. So when he went back to Germany, he studied building biology and eventually translated the building biology resources and brought them over to the English speaking world in 1987 and set up the Building Biology Institute in Florida. So building biology is an integrative approach. It brings together many different disciplines that are usually taught in isolation. And it does that to weave um, together this holistic view of how a building can impact the health and all the different ways that a building can impact the health of the people inside them. Our buildings have become much more convenient and comfortable and clean, but we've fallen out of balance with how they can affect the health of both us and the environment in which they are existing. So many times when a building has done its life cycle, the toxic materials that are used go and sit in a landfill and continue to poison the environment after these buildings are done. Usually if a building is not good for the earth, it's not good for us as well. We are one and the same. So when you uh, walk into a building that's been designed with the guiding principles of building biology, it's a pretty incredible experience. It feels totally different. There's an amazing energy that's palpable in these buildings. And it's these guiding principles of building biology, there's 25 of them, that really make up the soul of what this science is all about. And so these 25 principles are split into five different categories, which I'm going to briefly explain to you here. So the first group of principles, there's four principles, which deal with site and community design. So this looks at things like choosing a building site which is free of naturally occurring or human-made health hazards and also planning out a community that meets the needs of everyone within that community. There's five principles which focus on electromagnetic radiation health. So this looks at everything like using natural sunlight to minimizing the effects of building electrification, um, dealing with wireless sources both inside and outside the home, and assessing materials for their potential radioactivity. There's five principles which focus on indoor air and water quality. So looking at things like the moisture content in buildings, the humidity, how that can affect mold growth, uh, ventilation practices, using non-toxic building materials, and water purification strategies as well. Seven principles are grouped into occupant well-being. So this looks at things like proper climate-specific building materials, like that example uh, from earlier where we looked at concrete. Uh, within this hot North African community to the traditional structures, so very different methods there. Uh, using sound and indoor temperature um, factors as well, ergonomics, harmonic measure and design in both the building and also the furniture within that building. And then the last group is involved with environmental protection, social responsibility and energy efficiency. So this looks at the entire life cycle of building materials from their mining and use to their disposal and all of the embodied energy within those materials um, and also energy consumption and water saving technologies as well. So those make up the soul of what building biology is all about, those 25 guiding principles. 
And when you become a building biologist, you can use those guiding principles in a couple different ways. You can be trained as a building biology new build consultant. So that's someone who's tasked with creating structures from the ground up, utilizing as many of these um, principles in their design as possible. You can become a building biology environmental consultant. And that's someone whose main task is to go into existing structures and assess their health status and um, implement ways to make them healthier for the people inside them. And then there's an electromagnetic radiation specialist. So this is someone who dives deep into the EMF world and focuses in on all of the different frequencies of energy that are around us and how we can bring those levels more in line with nature. With building biology, nature is always considered the gold standard, something that we work towards. And considering the fact that we spend more than 90% of our time in these buildings, it's a pretty big deal whether or not they are impacting our health for the better or the worse. Because with any building, there are lots of factors which could be at play in how they are affecting the health of the people inside them. And there's always things that can be done to make these buildings healthier. It just requires an education and an awareness of what these factors are. So that is building biology in a nutshell. I hope that clears up a little bit about this wonderful science. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, the power lies with you. We'll see you next time.